Well, hi there. So in this video, we're going to be practicing about the long run costs that we looked at in the last video, where I went through and talked about all the little U shapes. So we're going to take a look at a problem that's from an AP exam where they don't actually give you all the U shapes, but they tell you enough information that you can figure out where you are in all those U shapes. It's kind of a neat problem. So the table below shows the output a firm produces using different amounts of capital and labor. And the markets for capital and labor are perfectly competitive. They have to tell you that or else you can get different answers. The rental rate of capital capital is $75 per unit. That just means the price is $75. And we'd say the wage rate is $200 per unit. Again, that's like the price of the workers. Some of that's going to be helpful later. In the short run, capital is fixed and labor is variable. So these are all kind of just the boilerplate language to give you some basic information. Now, these are the variable inputs, 0 to 1 to 2 to 3. And this would be like the output if we had one machine, right? So think about this capital as a machine. So if we had one machine and zero workers, well, we're not producing anything. If we had one machine and one worker, we produce 10. If we had two workers and one machine, we produce 25. If we have three workers and one machine, we produce 38. If we have two machines and we have no workers, we produce zero. If we have one worker and two machines, we make 20. Two workers and two machines makes 50. Three workers and two machines makes 75. And so if the firm uses one unit of labor, one unit of labor, and one unit of capital, how much does it make? One unit of capital, they make 10. And again, that's just from looking in this table. If the firm doubles its size to two labor and two capital, how much output is it producing? So now we go from one labor to two, but we're gonna not do the 25 because it said we also doubled to two units of capital. So we actually went to 50, right? So 50, and again, that's from two workers and two machines. So we went from 10 to 50, the firm less than, more than exactly doubles its output by doubling its size. Well, it more than, let me move that out of the way, more than doubled its output, which should tell us actually enough information to know that we are in, if you're kind of thinking about this, that we are in the economies of scale range because we've actually increased our total cost by 100%, right? We've doubled the size of the company. So there's a change in total cost of 100%, but we have a 500% increase, or sorry, a 400% increase in the total product because we went from 10 to 50. And so we'd say that's a huge increase, right? 50 minus 10 over 10 is 40 over 10. That's 400% increase in quantity, percent increase in quantity of total product and a 100% increase in total costs because we doubled right the costs. So there's two ways we could do this. We can kind of observe that relationship that ATC is total cost over total product. And so ATC therefore is decreasing. Therefore, we are in the economies of scale. We could also say increasing returns, right? Or increasing, increasing returns to scale. So we're in the increasing returns to scale. You can also do it with the actual prices of these particular things. So I was kind of thinking about like, what would be the before? Well, the before would be one worker and one machine. So there's a different way to think about this problem. One worker and one machine would cost us $275. That's our cost. And then we're producing 10 units. So the ATC is $2750 for that. The ATC is 2750. And again, how I got that was the worker was 200, the machine was 75. That's the total cost divided by the total product, 2750. But when we move to here, you go two workers and two machines. So two workers would be 400 and two machines is 150. 400 plus 150 is 550. 550 divided by the total product is 50. We just cancel out that one, cancel out that one. 55 over a five is 11. So right there, you can see the ATC went down. It went from 2750 to 11, which is why we actually are in the economies of scale, increasing returns to scale range, because that ATC value went down as we scaled up the operations of the building. Now, the last part, assume the firm currently has two units of capital and is using three units of labor. So two units of capital, three units of labor, we're producing 75 units. A s calculate the marginal product for the third unit of labor, show your work. So when we went from the second labor to the third, we went from 50 to 75. So we'd say A is 75 minus 50 equals 25. 
That's just the marginal product of that last worker. Did the firm experience diminishing marginal returns with the addition of the third unit of labor? Explain using numbers from the table. Well, so when we went from here to here, that was 25. When we went from here to here, that was 30. And we went from here to here, that was 20. So because we had marginal products that were decreasing, we went from 30 to 25, we would say, yes, there is diminishing marginal returns. Yes, because quantity of labor to marginal product was, what did we say? The second worker generated 30 units. So the second worker was 30. Then, ooh, we got a wobble, whoa. And then quantity of labor three, the marginal product was 25. And so the marginal product decreasing is what actually told us, yes, we're in diminishing marginal returns. And here we've used numbers from that table. C says, calculate the firm's average total cost for its current level of production, show your work. So we know that average total cost equals total cost over total product. So we've got, we got to find out, well, how much total product we're making 75. So we can just put that down at the bottom. But the numerator is going to be three workers and two machines. So three workers is going to be three times 200 plus two times 75. And so that's going to be 600 and then 150 is 750 over 75 equals $10. And then um, last but not least, if the firm's output is sold in a competitive market, what's the lowest price at which the third worker would be hired? Well, this is a really trick question, really tricky, but it's not that hard, actually. You might think about it and be like, huh? Well, think, think clearly for a moment. This second worker, how much do they cost us? Or the third worker, they cost us 200 bucks. Every worker costs us 200 bucks, right? So when we went from two to three, it cost us 200 bucks. How many units did we gain? Well, we gained 25 units from that worker. So it's saying the cost of the worker cost was 200 and the gain, and that's $200, the gain was 25 units. So how much would a unit, let me move that so you can see it just a little bit, how much would a unit have to be priced in order to make up that cost? What would be worth it for one unit would be priced at at least how much to make it worth hiring that worker for $200. And all you got to do there is divide 200 by 25 and you'll find the answer is $8. If the product is selling for $8, then the 25 units that this worker generates are worth $200 and then it becomes worth the cost to actually hire that worker for $200. So it's a tricky question, but at the end of the day, it's really not actually too bad when you just kind of back up a little bit and think about what it's asking you is this worker made 25 units, they cost us 200 bucks. What does each one of those units have to be priced at at least in order to justify hiring that worker? All right, so hopefully this helps you. This was an AP exam problem. I'll see you next time.